This video covers an overview on 454 pyro sequencing, a type of next generational sequencing. The first step is sample input and fragmentation. In order to prepare the library for emulsion PCR, it must first be fragmented into smaller pieces of about 300 to 800 base pairs, which can then be sequenced. The process of cutting up a large strand of DNA, sequencing it, and then putting it back together is referred to as shotgun sequencing. There are various ways to fragment DNA. One common method used is sonification, which shears DNA by exposing it to periods of high sound energy. Another common method is nebulization, which shears DNA by forcing it through a small hole in a nebulizer unit. This results in a formation of a mist that is collected. The fragment size is determined by the pressure of the gas used to push the DNA through the nebulizer. The difference between this method and various others of the next generational sequencing is that there is no cloning step. This allows for sequencing in a highly parallel manner. The sequence is amplified on little beads in emulsion PCR. By adding single nucleotides one at a time, the machine can detect the light reaction coming off the specific base and are able to get a sequence from this. There is another video available that goes into greater detail on how emulsion PCR works. The next step is library preparation. After the DNA is fragmented, the ends are then ligated with adapters. It is then denatured into single strands by heating it to 95 degrees Celsius. Ligating rapid library adapters to the fragments are needed for subsequent purification, quantification, amplification, and sequencing steps. Aided by the adapters, the sequences are then captured on their own unique bead. These beads are then mixed in emulsion oil in order to form fine dispersions of minute droplets and separate each of the fragment bead complexes. This allows for amplification of each sequence simultaneously without contamination. Each bead carries a unique single-stranded library fragment. Emulsified beads with amplification reagents and water and oil mixture to trap individual beads in amplification microreactors. The next step is the emulsion PCR vification. The sequences are amplified by emulsion PCR in parallel to create millions of only copies of each library fragment on each bead. Break the emulsion while the amplified fragments remain bound to their specific beads. Microreactors are the fragment B complexes and the PCR reagents in the emulsion miscles or droplets. Each of these microreactors are ready to start amplifying the sequence. Primers are used as a starting point for DNA synthesis. DNA polymerase, the enzyme, is, is then used to add the nucleotides, or the, the DNPs. Buffers set the pH level at an optimum level for enzymatic activity and keep it at that level. Miscals produce 1 million copies of each DNA fragment on the surface of each bead. These beads are then loaded into the Pico Titter Plate device where the surface design allows for only one bead per well. The PTP device is then loaded instrument for sequencing. Individual nucleotides are followed in sequence across the wells. Each incorporation of a nucleotide complementary template strand results in a luminescent light signal recorded by the camera. Millions of copies of a single clonal fragment are contained at each DNA captured bead. Sequencing is accomplished by synthesizing the complementary strands of the bead attached to templates. In a number of cycles, the four bases, adenine, thymine, guanosine, and cytosine, are sequentially washed over the pico titter plate, or PTP plate. The incorporation of a new base is associated with the release of an inorganic phosphate starting chemical cascade. This results in the generation of a light signal, which is captured by the CCD camera. This sequencing machine will then record nucleotides and provide a file with the results. After the sequencing, the next step is data processing and analysis. 
454 sequencing data analysis software uses the signal intensity of each incorporation event at each well position to determine the sequence of all the reads in the parallel. Next, they analyze the results in depth with powerful and user-friendly bioinformatics software for de novo assembly, mapping, and amplicon variant detection. The intensity of the light emitted by rays is proportional to the number of nucleotides incorporated. Therefore, if the intensity of a single read is three times the intensity of a previous read, there are three times the amount of incorporated nucleotides in the second read. There are two types of analysis. Runtime analysis, which uses image acquisition of the raw image, image processing by mapping of the raw image corresponding wells, and signal processing of the individual well signals incorporation into the flow gram. And the second type of analysis is post-run processing, which uses a separate computer than the sequencing machine. This assembles the sequence by overlapping multiple reads to create larger reads and thus assembling a consensus read. This is also called alignment. It also maps the reads onto the consensus obtained from the assembly to resequence the genome and then compares the sample reads to reference known sequences for identification. This is the work cited for this video. The next video will be covering another type of next generational sequencing called Illumina sequencing.